A normal day in winter. A young girl wakes up to the phone alarm lazily. She hears a noise outside and sees a dog barking at trash and his owner trying to pull him away. She brushes her teeth and cleans a strange hand mark on the mirror. While leaving for school, her mom calls her to get an umbrella cause it may rain today. But she says she's gonna buy one. In the school lobby, she's is still a little bit sleepy. A big pillow hugs her from the back, and she can tell that it's her friend from this mega-sized mommy milkers. While chatting, another girl asks them to get out of the way. The girl stops for a while looking at Maruko, then leaves again saying never mind. In the class, Maruko was looking out the window at the wind moving a tennis ball, but her teacher's voice comes to her ears and asks her to start reading for the class. But, the ball is still moving with no wind. Later in the break, Maruko tells her friend Hana that she's eating a lot. She says it's okay. I think I have a good metabolism. But Maruko can tell where all this food goes. Suddenly Maruko gets a weird feeling and looks around. But when she looks back she finds her friend took a bite and starts acting like nothing happened. Later in the bathroom, she hears a hit on the wall from the next bath that got her wondering if the person next door is okay. But when leaving, she sees the next bath door locked. After school, her friend suggested shopping later for a new bra, cause hers got tighter again. Maruko knows that the problem isn't with the bra. They wave to each other before taking a different road. She check her pack and notices that her cute keychain is missing. And she went all the way she came from till she got back to school searching for it. She sees a smoky figure in the dark. And she turns on the light to look again. But nothing is there. She sees her medal under the table and kneels down for it. She keeps trying till she finally gets it. But she gets that weird feeling again. She checks the lobby. But no one there. It started to rain outside and Maruko starts running searching for a cover till she gets to the bus station and tries to squeeze her wet skirt clothes. She texts Hana to make sure she got home. But out of a sudden her phone starts acting glitchy then an ugly figure scared her off. She freezes for a while. Then she gathers herself and moves carefully to pick up the phone. She checks the chat and sees that everything is normal. She tells herself I must be tired today and clean her eyes. Maruko somehow managed to defeat the urge to run and made up a fixed face. She pretends she can't see him and looks away but the chunky monster is still hovering around her to catch a reaction. She keeps acting, whatever the ugly creature does, till he finally leaves saying, she can't see me, and Maruko is still fixed in her place from fear. She totally saw that. At home, Maruko brushes her teeth before sleeping, but she again sees the hand mark on the mirror. Wondering who made it, she wipes it again and bent down to wash her mouth. But when she looks up, another ghost is directly in her back. The ghost slaps the mirror making the mark again. From the reaction she was making, his body transforms and Maruko finds a long nick getting in front of her saying, Can you see me? She keeps a fixed face this time also, and bent down pretending to wash her eyes. Shaking in fear she tries to believe that this is her imagination. I must have been really stressed, but when she looks up again, it's still there. All real, so close to her from behind. A while later, Maruko is searching for something, and keeps looking till she gets out with a salt pack in her hand. She empties the alt into a bowl and puts it in front of her room door, and wishes that it can keep these things away. Even that thing in the bathroom that stayed for 30 minutes. She jumps to her bed and holds the phone to google out an exercise items. Prayer beads come out as a result. Then she turns it off and goes to sleep. But she notices that the salt is spilled. She ignores this and goes to sleep anyway. But there is a noise from under the cover. When she left it up, she find another creature under her blanket on top of her belly saying, Mama. She holds it and goes to sleep anyway. In the morning, she opens her eyes. The first thing she do is checking under the blanket for the ghost but nothing is there. Even in these places, where she saw this creature before, she finds nothing. Walking happily into the school thinking she must have been stressed much yesterday. Suddenly her friend hugs her from the back, scaring the shit out of her. Hana wonders why she got this reaction. Maruko stands up saying to herself, I can't see anything, that's good news. A shadow out of the window walking by. Maruko asks her friend isn't this the third floor? The ghost heard it and comes in, directly in front of her, blocking Hana's face and says, Good morning sensei. It's not her imagination, it's totally real. Hana wonders why she's staring much at her, but Maruko keeps a fixed face till the student ghost finally leaves. Hana says, are you gonna ask me out? But Maruko ignores her friend saying to herself, like hell this is gonna happen. I'm only gonna be dominated by these two monsters you have. In the girls' changing room, the girls are talking about a scary ghost head that can hide in the victim's closet. 
Hana asks Maruko to open the lock for her cause she's afraid. Maruko hesitates at first cause she already knows about her bad luck recently, but she does it anyway. But nothing is there. When she accidentally looks up, she finds a real ghost head. Maruko tries to keep a straight face and ignores it and everything will be okay. But Hana can't reach her phone and asks her to bring it for her. Maruko hesitates for a while but in the end, she gets it even after the ghost almost scared the shit out of her. Later in class, her friend tells her something she's afraid others would hear. She forgot her panties in the changing room, it's totally exposed down there. Can you? But Maruko says instantly, no way I'm going back. Okay okay, like nothing is gonna happen when I'm like this anyway. I guess we all can tell that something definitely gonna happen. Maruko gets a weird feeling from the direction of her friend's table, and as expected, she tries to push the table away. Then she takes Hana's hand and says she wanna go to the nurse's office. Hana tries to stop her to figure out what's going on but when Maruko looks back, she finds that it's too late already. The ghost is already here, holding with all his long hands to her thick friend parts. At the nurse's office, Hana is trying the nurse tools to kill time while waiting for her. I can't hear my heartbeat, maybe because there is something in the way. What about you Maruko? I bet I can hear yours clearly. Damn! Maruko ignores her joke, and she finds a hand sanitizer and decides to see if it can do something against this perverted ghost, and sprays much of it. It got Hana's clothes wet. That's almost showing what's under it, but this made the ghost start shaking suddenly. Maruko thinks that it's working, but it just got the ghost more happy. He's a man of culture as well. Hana comes at her to hear her heartbeat with the ghost ready to squeeze her as well, and she does it. But the nurse comes in. Aren't you both having fun? The ghost runs at her without thinking. Maruko watches him holding to the nurse like he never saw something like this before. The two friends apologize for the trouble and leave the office. While Maruko feels kinda defeated, somehow. After school they go to the sweet store. And Maruko goes to stands in the queue while looking at the menu on her phone. Her friend calls her. What are you doing in the middle of the road? She asks herself if that's the store queue, that what queue I'm in then. She realizes that this is a queue of ghosts. But her friend comes and pulls her away saying stop staring at your phone or you gonna get hit by a car. From the deepest parts of her heart, she thanks her friend after seeing the end of the ghost's queue. On the way home they find a little cute kitten. And of course a little cute ghost as well. Her friends decide to make a post on the internet for someone to adopt it. They are waiting at the park for someone to come and pick the kitten up. And of course with my little boy Ghosty as well. Hana starts playing around with the kitten happily. But she hit a dude. She looks up and rises her head to apologize. But she stopes when she sees his scary face. She feels terrified and goes back to her seat and thinks that he's gonna kill her. And leaves the dude standing. Maruko can see something, but someone calls them. Excuse me, aren't you the one with the kitten? This time it's a good looking guy. And Hana gets happy this time and says, Isn't he a nice dude? Let's give the kitten to him. But Maruko stands frozen in her place from what her eyes can see. This dude is evil, with dark cat souls all around him, and little ghost fights with it. She refuses to give the kitten. He wonders why at first, but changes his mind and leaves the place. Hana sees that the other dude is still standing and gets more terrified that he might kill her. But Maruko takes the kitten from Hana's hand, and goes to him. She pushes it to the dude and says, Please take care of it. He gets really heat-touching reaction and say, Thanks, I will take really good care of it. Maruko can see how badly her friend judged this dude from the only way he looks. He takes the kitten gently and leaves while playing with it. Hana comes asking, Are you sure about that? Someone please shut up this racist big boobs or I'm gonna do something bad to her. Time passes and Maruko tries to get used to this, but the ghosts are getting worse till she concludes that acting is not enough. The next day she takes a bus on her way to meet with Hana to shop for prayer beads. But after a while of being on the bus, she feels like something is wrong. She hears the noise of girls chatting, so she looks at the girls by her side. All the girls around her are silent, but the person in front of her, yes, as she actually guessed it. It's on a wire, stuck inside my lows, ain't getting higher, I don't wanna die, but was it my turn, look up at the sky. Maruko freezes her face instantly and decides to get down, but... I don't think you understand the trouble you in, 33 been dragging bodies out the cellar again, and really lately my mental state hasn't been on its best. She clicks the button and waits for the bus to stop. The ghost gets down first waiting for her, but she doesn't. She managed to trick it, but suddenly hears a girl's voice chatting and laughing. That stopped her heart, but this time it was the girl on the next seat. She was the first to get to the coffee shop and had to wait for Hana. On another table, she sees a female soul around a pretty face boy that is talking to a girl on the phone. 
The boy makes eye contact with her then smiles. Her the female ghost sees it. She looks at her and gets nuts. Maruko tries to think of something fast. She picks up her phone and starts typing fast. When the ghost gets beside Maruko, she sees Maruko watching a video of muscled men wrestling and Maruko pretends that this is her type of man, not the handsome ones. The trick worked and the female ghost gets back to her guy saying, Save, Hana finally arrives and they get ready to leave. The dude comes towards them and tries to hit on Maruko, but she ignores him and a pretty young girl arrives. Sorry for being late. Maruko looks at the girl and sees many of these male souls around her. She leaves saying, Birds with feathers. Finally, she got like four prayer beads. The more it is the stronger it can be. She recalls what happened with Hana and decides to give her two prayer beads to protect her and says it's a new trend. Hana decides to treat her on but Bond sweets as thanks and takes a short road to the shop, a road that is filled with these creatures. Maruko slowly steps with the prayer beads ahead of her. She finds that the ghosts are backing off. The prayer beads are working for real or that's what she thought. But a big chunky ghost blocks her way and she sees no trouble at all. With a single word of the ghost, the beads break, and she loses her confidence again and freezes in her place trying not to make any reaction, or that's gonna be the end. Hana sees Maruko standing frozen in her position, and wonders what's going on. Maruko gathers herself, and holds her breath, then walks through the ugly ghost. She succeeded but it was scary as fuck. But Hana lost her doll and tries to get it, and accidentally she pushes Maruko's head inside the creepy ghost. She almost wet herself. In the end, they manage to get the pretty smooth and tasty butt bond. That makes you feel like you eating a real butt. That's not a joke made by me by the way, it's from the show. At a fortune and exorcism store, the student we saw earlier was watching from a distance. But later she leaves saying to herself, We'll give it another shot on another day. We see an old woman who managed to trick a lady with love beads and got paid for this. The lady leaves with a happy face, but the old one smiles to herself saying, it's gonna work two more times. Hana and Maruko come to ask her for strong prayer beads. The old grandma thinks teenagers don't have money, so she can just sell them a random pair of beads, but the prayer beads break instantly, and the old lady realizes this is a serious issue. She apologizes to the kids saying, Sorry this one was kinda old, let me get you a new one, and goes back with a serious look thinking, I maybe be a rotten scammer, but I can see it. It's still blurry figures to me. She asks Maruko if she saw anything odd recently, but Maruko instantly declines it. She clearly can see it but choose to ignore it. What a tough girl she is. On the other side, her friend has a very powerful aura. This can really protect her, but it's not without a price. The old lady was able to see the whole thing and decides not to abandon these girls. She opens a secret metal lock and gets out a well-sealed book. That is her most precious and powerful item. Maruko asks her if she's sure about this, but the old lady insists on it. This is a thing I'm proud of. The old mother is back, but it starts shaking like crazy, then breaks as well, and the beads hit the grandma face badly. Before the sunset, the couple is walking back home and Maruko feels so down. I'm not counting on prayer beads anymore. At some point, the chunky ghost stopped following them. Next morning, she had the feeling while sleeping, trying to resist it. Stop, please. She opens her eyes to find her little brother looking at her in the face. He asks if she was having a dirty dream then ran immediately before she hit him. Maruko has already gotten used to keeping a fixed reaction to any sudden appearance of ghosts, a skill she needs to survive. At night she goes to get a drink from the machine nearby. Her coin drops and when she bends down to get it, she sees a little cute old man ghost that starts running once spotted. She pretends that her coin slipped again and goes after the little cute old man. But, it's now a pig ugly and chubby old man that almost made her shit herself. She tries to keep acting like she used to do, but every cell of her body tells her to run. She already knows if she runs, it's gonna be the end for her acting, screaming from inside and frozen from outside. Please, something, someone, save me. Suddenly a cross snitches the coin and flies away. Unable to process the sudden change in front of her, she finally starts running to catch after it, but with a thank god smile on her face. After school, the girl from that day was watching her from a distance, but her little brother was as well. After his classmates told him that his sister is acting strange recently because she got a boyfriend, he follows her everywhere wondering why she didn't tell him and insists he must protect her. At the library Maruko suddenly sees another ghost that almost got a reaction from her and puts the book back and leaves. Her brother goes to see what book she was reading, but he gets the wrong book. 99 Ways to Please Your Lover At the bath, it's finally time for Maruko to relax. She saw a lot of monsters today. She takes off her underwear as well and goes to wash her body first. Then she gets to a warm bath, deep in her thoughts. 
This ghost in the library was the scariest one. The evil souls that appears out of a sudden are a real threat to me. I might have made a reaction. But she panics suddenly and says what was that? She was actually half asleep as she was really tired. But when she looks to her side, she sees it, a real one this time. No please, not in the bath as well. I have no choice left. She stands up to leave, but the ghost reacts as well and stands. She freezes in her place from the fear and the ghost's head starts looking in her direction. Her tears almost coming out. The bath door opens suddenly and her little brother was coming in. He sees her sister in front of him frozen, and tears almost drop from her eyes. He feels shy and apologizes then turn to leave, but Maruko asks him to let her wash his back. He got to ask her if she has a boyfriend, but she says no. He didn't believe it at first. With the next day's alarm, she wakes to wish the same wish as always. She loses her ability to see these creatures. But there was no use, no one is hearing her prayers. She goes downstairs to have breakfast with her family, but she sees it, the ugliest, and the scariest till the moment, forcing her body to act normal but it's hard this time, much harder than ever. Her brother tells her he saw a pudding in the fridge. Better put a name on it or someone will eat it. His father says, come on, don't bring that up now. Her mother as well says, last year you had a fight with your father because he ate it. Come on everyone, I didn't know who it belongs to. She stands up and says I'm not hungry and gets ready to leave, while her parents are greeting their daughter and wishing her a good day. Miruk goes back inside, opens the fridge, grabs the pudding, and goes to her father's corner. She gives the pudding to his soul. You giving it to me, my dear daughter. Sorry for eating it last year. I really wanted to apologize to you, but I never got that chance. I never got to make it up to you. I guess fate isn't that fully nice to ever own. See you later dad. A couple of days earlier, we see Maruko's schoolmate from that day asking the old lady to be her apprentice. Her name is Yulia Nigaret. Since she was a child she was able to see these scary creatures, this was the world she knew. The old lady tries to get rid of her, but Yulia keeps insisting. So she gives her a prayer bead saying it's brimming with power, take it and go. She happily agrees thinking this means the old grandam agreed, and decided to let some random ghosts go in peace since he doesn't case harm. One day she will be a powerful fortuner and exorcism master. But she came one day to see the old lady's store is closed. The old man next door says she went back hometown saying something about discovering her limits. Who on earth is stronger than the master? The old man says these two girls were her last customers. Miruko and Hana see the store is closed, so they left. Yulia decides to watch them from afar. At sports class, Yulia comes and asks Maruko for a minute. She gets her in the tools locker and closes the door. She introduces herself, while Maruko looks to her side to see the small old men ghosts. You can see them. I know you are one of us. But Maruko decides to play dumb. Yulia gets shocked why Maruko is gonna keep acting, and thinks that it's because she's stronger than her master, she doesn't even want to waste her time with her. I have been watching you, I know you can see them. Maruko can see the small ghosts for sure, but she can also see this one in the back as well. The ugly evil soul comes out and stands next to them watching. But the girl kept insisting that let the monster conclude that they can see him. I'm gonna show you my true power. But the prayer beads break instantly. Yulia can't believe her eyes while the monster is raging crazy, and Maruko doesn't know what to do. She recalls that move she saw on TV, and applies the serpent drope on Yulia till she faints with tears in her eyes. At the nurse's office, Yulia wakes up and gets scared when she sees Maruko next to her. You tried to kill me. Maruko tries to clear it and says, just let it go this time. It's better to pretend that you don't see it, with a smile and leaves. But Yulia saw this in a different way, and cries in fear. You threaten me. I may be weak but I will make you pay for this. Maruko concludes that she can't see the big things. Suddenly Hana asks if she really shocked a classmate to death. In her way from shopping after school, Maruko was going to use stairs. But she sees another creature. She decides to just keep pretending and walk past it like nothing. But it catches her hand suddenly. That gives chills to every cell in her body. But when she looks, she finds out that it's just an old lady want help. Maruko saw so much that she doesn't know the truth anymore. She carries the old lady home and let her down. Her daughter comes and thanks her for getting her mother back. But it's that feeling again. The thing besides her this time isn't a human. She gets to leave but the old lady catches her hand. Is this thing what people call the internet? Maruko screams from inside. Not now grandma. Why your hand is suddenly so strong? The ghost gets closer to them and says some numbers to her ears. Maruko somehow got it and writes the numbers down to the old lady while pretending to explain what this device does. 
The old lady gets inside by herself and goes to a metal lock, but her daughter tells her you already forgot it, you can't open the lock. But she opens it and gets out the last present the father bought for her. Maruko still stands there watching from afar. The ghost goes to her and says, Thank you so much. The next day, Hana is taking a tour around dessert stores with Maruko that says to herself, I envy you for having these big two tanks that store the calories. But she suddenly frees, with a shaking eyes. She tries to control herself. Hana, I know a better store, let's go and check it. Hana happily agrees, but in the back there's something that's terrifying ugly, with claws that saw all this. Next day, Maruko wakes up terrified from sleeping. It's getting worse every day. This monster from yesterday was the worst she saw. On the other side, Hana wakes up lazily and finds that her clock stopped working again. She got herself a huge breakfast and shares a picture with Maruko and start dressing herself to get ready for hanging out with her. The light flicks and she says they replaced this one recently. She sees the neighbor's dog barking nonstop. She wonders why he was a good boy. But the dog is scared of something. Even the little ghosts on the way are terrified and they hide when Hana passes by them. It's a nightmare walking beside her. He grabs one of the little ghosts, then throws it on her boobs. The little one is getting burned, and when it's half-cooked, he grabs it again and eats it. The dude really put Hana's pillows to better use. Hana gets hungry again. Even she just had breakfast a little while ago. She gets out a meal from her pack, eats it and in a short while, she shines with energy again. She sees a crying boy on her way, and asks if he's lost. He says that his dog run inside this scary hunted building and he's afraid to go in. She gathers herself and decides to go in saying don't worry, leave it for your big sister. She tries not to show fear and looks everywhere for the dog. And of course, our Gordon Ramsay is following her, grabbing a juicy old man and cooking it as well. Hana decides if she starts singing she won't be afraid and start looking again. She hears a noise and goes to check with more ghost eyes watching her. She comes out with a big dog in her arms and can't help but smile when she sees the look on the kid's face. Then she gets him home. Maruko is wondering why Hana is late, but she hears her calling. She hardly holds her shock when she sees Gordon Ramsay and asks Hana if she were in a hunted house or something. Among the trees, they are climbing long stairs till they got to a shrine. Maruko recognized Gordon Ramsay, but why did he get more big and ugly? They ring the bill, but they don't find anyone. They pick up coins and threw them inside, and Hana starts making her wish to eat all delicious meals. But Maruko is still wishing for someone to save her and Hana from this curse. She looks back to find two more creatures besides the ghost. Great, more of them. Out of a sudden, the two creatures attack Gordon Ramsay. They cut his both arms and fix him to the ground with gravity. But she stands up. I'm not going without a fight, bitches. And he kills one of them. He rages loudly and eats the one he killed. Maruko was watching the fight but Hana pulls her to take a selfie with the sunset. But, another big creature shows up. The twin ghosts point at Maruko while saying something she can't understand. And then the big monster gets his hand closer to her head and says, Three times. Then they all vanish into the air like nothing was. Hana is checking on her phone and looks back to find Maruko frozen in fear and asks why she looks like she saw a ghost or something. The next day, the girl from earlier, Yuria, takes a bath while thinking about how Maruko humiliated her and estimated her power and notices that one of the little ghosts is watching but she ignores it. She's plotting something for revenge. At the class, Hana comes to Miko to show her the number of likes their selfie got. And Miko concludes that normal people can't see these things in pictures as well. However, Hana thinks that she may have a talent for photography, so she got an instant camera. Unfortunately, Miko remembers that she has a lot of nightmares hovering around her, and she must stop her. But Hana took a sudden picture of her saying you had a good reaction on your face just now. And of course, there was a flying ghost that came out of nowhere. Yuria comes out of a sudden saying what a great shot, you are talented. Hana hardly remembers her as the girl Miko tried to murder. Yuria says we were just having fun. Hana wonders since when you both are good friends, do you have a shared secret you are hiding from me or something? Yuria tells her that she know a few spots for taking great shots and Miko tries to stop this but Yuria compliments her picture saying you don't want to waste your talent. This gets Hana in emotions and gives Yuria a tight hug saying finally someone who understands my feelings without always complaining about the size of my pillows. 
Iria is happy for the chance to get revenge, but she realizes that there is no space for the air to come in and she faints. Another victim of Hana's pillows. And yeah, they took the bus after school with Iria, and Hana was so excited while Maruka was forced to come. Iria takes them on a long walk across the trees till they get to a weird place, a dark old tunnel that got the two friends wondering what's wrong with this place. Iria tells them that the spot is on the other side. This was her plan. Hana is too scared that even a drop of water freaks her a lot and starts complaining to get done with this scary shit fast. Miko feels something stuck on her shoes and bent down to get it. But Yuria sees this and when Miko finds out that it's a rock and threw it away, she feels scared from Miko's and thinks that she's putting a magical barrier. Maruko sees her look and thinks she saw her tripping, so she tells her it's not a big deal. Yuria thinks that she's too overpowered to put a barrier this fast saying it's not even a big deal. Miko can see it now, they started to show up. Hana decides to go back and Miko agrees, but Yuria tells her that there are an infinite of possibilities to help her talent, and this was enough to change Hana's mind. Then she suggests taking a light in the dark shot for Miko, and asks Miko to take a sweet pose for it, but this is getting worse. When Yuria sees the picture, she wonders when did all the others come from, she didn't see them before. Miko decides to get away fast before something worse shows up, but, in speak of the devil, she can feel it now, a barrel ghost with chains around his body. Hana decides to not give up, but Miko tries to stop her. The ghost throws a chain at one of the ghosts and grabs it to his arms then and starts squeezing it. Iria sees Miko's hands move at the same time the ghost got grabbed. This nightmare starts eating his prey till it gets destroyed and vanishes into the air. Iria thinks that Mirko killed the ghost with a single move of her hand and can't believe that she's this insanely overpowered. Miko looks at Yuria and wonders if she can actually see the big one this time. If she can see it, then she must agree to get out of here fast, and speaks to her with eye signals. But Yuria thinks she's telling her to show what she can do. Unfortunately, Hana wanna keep moving, so Miko tricks her again to get back warning of a spider. But, out of sudden, the nightmare grabs all the other ghosts suddenly, smashes, squeezes, and eats all of them with a single move. The trick works on Hana. But Miko freezes from what's happening to the creature in front of her. He gets more ugly. Iria gets shocked to see that all other ghosts got destroyed with a single move of Miko Spider's attack. And she can't even do a single tiny one. But the monster grabs the tiny ghost as well which makes her think that her power is starting to work finally. She looks at Miko to tell her did you see that. But Miko grabs her hand to save her from the nightmare. But she thinks that she's ignoring her and starts arguing with her. And again, the big ugly scary ghost hears her and concludes that they can see him. Miko grabs Yuria to her chest to save her while the ghost stands on his legs screaming and starts attacking. But, out of a sudden, white energy hits the ghost badly that damages it a lot. It's the twin ghosts from the shrine. The big ghost heals his wounds so fast, but decides to back off this time and vanish through the wall. The twin ghosts look at Miko and rise one finger, then vanish as well. She doesn't know what's going on but she's happy they are saved except for Yuria who got choked on someone's pillows for the second time today. On their way back, Miko and Yuria are so down. Hana sees this and gets her chest closer to Yuria to hug both girls to cheer them up. Watch out, these things can kill someone. She takes a selfie and sends it to both of them. She tells the girls to chill, they can always take pictures as many times as they want. Yuria remembers when her classmates made fun of her and since then she lived lonely. But now, it's different. She set the selfie as wallpaper with a warm feeling on her face. At the clothes store, Maruko and her little brother are shopping for a present for their mother. He tells her that she's almost the same shape as their mom, so she should try the size and she agrees. But how can a day pass without another ghost coming out of sudden and almost scaring the shit out of you? She holds her reaction again and in the end, she decides to go home like this. Her brother asks why she's doing this cause they are giving it to their mom, but Maruko won't ever go back inside again. They pick up the train on the way back, and her brother falls asleep easily and Miko waits patiently. But, it sounds like it's not her lucky day. A ghost with an axe and a bag on his back is coming this way. Like usual she's just gonna pretend she can't see him and everything will be okay, or that's what she thought. The reaper swings his axe through a passenger's head, but nothing happens. The bad news is, he's going down the line one by one. Nothing is strange as they all are normal people, except for her. She decides to run away, but her brother is deeply asleep. One of the passengers stands up and goes to the door. The reaper goes after him and swings his axe multiple times through his body. But it's the wrong person. Miruko now knows this will happen to her and doesn't know what to do anymore. The girl beside her doesn't look normal somehow. When the reaper swings his axe through her head, he can feel a resistance. He pulls it fast to reveal a ghost hidden in the woman's body. 
He grabs it and put it inside the pack he has. But now, the next in line is Maruko. She doesn't know what the hell just happened. How on earth she can not make a reaction to this. It's getting like chaos on her head. But it's too late now as the reaper swings his axe through her head. But, he doesn't feel a resistance from her. And moves his axe back and swings it through the passengers who are moving. After a while, the little brother wakes up to see that his sister is standing. He wonders why. But she says let's go before the train moves again. He tries to stop her and says that's not our station yet, but she tells him that she needs to go shopping for new panties. He gets what she meant and says that girl's life is so hard. After the end of the school day, Hana puts her ears on her teacher's belly and says she can hear a kick. Maruko tells her they are gonna miss her starting tomorrow and she says she's gonna miss her lovely students as well. Hana tells her she's gonna held him for her during classes. The teacher asks if she can change the diapers too, but she doesn't know how. Maruko sees a strange cloud hovering around the teacher and goes towards her belly. This got a reaction from her, and they look back to ask what's wrong. Maruko doesn't know what to say as she just realizes that they can't see it, which means it's a soul, but why it keeps getting back to her belly. The teacher thanks them and says she can go by herself from here. She tells Hana not to eat her lunch in the first period, while Maruko is still watching the white soul and hesitating about what to do. She suddenly calls for the teacher and tells her to be careful around the stairs and stuff. The silence takes over the situation, but the teacher says don't worry, I know everything will be okay this time. Actually, this is our second try. My first one didn't make it, he was a boy, so I'm gonna give him extra love from me and his old brother. I can't explain it, but I just know that everything will be okay. Hana hugs the teacher and starts crying promising to change the diapers. And Maruko now knows who this soul is. She says goodbye to Hana at the train station and takes the bus to her home. She still thinks about current events wondering, why did I start seeing all this out of a sudden? Is it a curse or a blessing? I gotta make my way through all of this. But when she goes to get a drink from the machine, she sees a gross ghost licking it, but she had to buy something anyway. The next day, Hana tells Miko about the problem with vending machine while the class was waiting for the new teacher today till their loved one puts her baby safely. But, from all the possibilities in the world, comes the unexpected. Hana asks if they saw this person before. But Miko can't ever forget about this evil aura. Glad to meet you all today. My name is Sen Tuno. I will be your teacher starting today. The handsome guy from that day in the garden is their new teacher, and her classmates ask him if he has a girlfriend. But he ignores them and starts calling their names. Hana still trying to remember him, but she gets hungry out of a sudden. Miko is relieved that Hana doesn't remember him, and it sounds like he doesn't remember them as well. However, Miko can't feel this, but there is something watching. At the school restaurant, Hana buys a huge amount of food that gets Miko to tell her that she is gonna die like this. She says she doesn't know why she's getting hungry this fast, but suddenly she screams. I forgot to buy my after-lunch bread, and runs for it leaving Maruko alone. While waiting, she sees the new teacher coming her way. But, Han's marks start to appear on the glass following him that scares her and leaves instantly, but the teacher's eyes notice something. In the bath, she takes her breath after running wondering what the hell was that. But she hears a footstep getting closer, did he follow her? She hides inside the bathroom and hopes that she doesn't get discovered. It's actually her classmates and one of them is checking her eye lenses cause she has a chance with her crush today. She feels relieved and takes her breath slowly, but once she opens her eyes, she gets shocked by a ghost head coming out of the bath. Fuck, she just made a reaction. The ghost pulls his body out, and it's so huge. She refuses to believe that this is the end, after what she has been through. She's gonna die to a shit ghost. She keeps a fixed face at least to get some time to think of the possibility to survive this. She sees the roll is out of tissues, and plays it out. I gotta go to the next bath then. But when she opens the next door, she sees Yuria eating her lunch alone in the bathroom. Later in the garden, Miko asks Yuria about this. She replies with embarrassment, but Hana tells her to eat with them from now on. Yuria wonders why are they so nice to her. They are much different from the others. Miko sees the new teacher walking and decides to keep an eye on him since she's the only one with the full vision. Not love. She almost died for a second. Her body finds it hard to process the shock, but it ended fast. The only reason she didn't react is she didn't see it. This was totally a close call. She starts crying as a normal reaction and her friends get worried about her. But, that young teacher was watching. 
Later, Hana takes the two girls to a house of horrors, but she is shaking in fear from this. Miko asks if she's sure about this, but Hana tells her they will get 20 donuts for free, so she wonders if she's hungry more than she's afraid. Iria thinks this is such a kid's play for her at first, but she changes her mind later. Miko finds this a chance to react like normal people and show emotions she wasn't able to do for a long while and starts screaming but with happy tears. It has been so long since she showed real emotions, but she almost reacted to a real one. Luckily it was a low IQ ghost or this would be another end game for her and with these scary customs around, she was able to keep going. In the end, Hana won the 20 free donuts. Miko tells Yuria they should go to a bigger hunted house next time, but Yuria thinks she's been tested. At an apartment, an old lady holding some food knocks on a door. When it opens she says good morning Zen Kun, I made too much stew again last night. So here is some left. Is the young teacher. She talks about the crows cause someone went after another cat again. The crow starts flying scaring the old lady. But the teacher remains calm and says he's gonna wash the box when he's done. But she notices blood on his hands and asks if he got hurt. He calmly says he broke some glass and closes the door slowly. Inside, he empties the food in the trash and looks at his hand. He washes it with water till it's totally clean, but there are no cuts on his hand. He picks up the trash while walking to school and threw it near the crows that can see it, the dark aura radiating from him. At the sports class, Hana asks how long until lunchtime, but Miko tells her it's only the second period. She is worried and doesn't know what's wrong with her getting hungry so fast recently. Miko tries to cheer her up then starts running again. But Hana says she is gonna lose more precious calories like this. And Miko thinks that running is a good way to lose this tension. Suddenly, an athlete ghost shows up and outruns everyone screaming get out of the way losers. And she finally realizes that doing sport is gay and decides to stop this shit and go get some burger instead. At the class, it's another normal day for all the classmates. Except for Miko. She wonders what the fuck is this? Why this thing appeared just now and doesn't leave the class? The ghost screams at any girl who has eye contact with the teacher. Don't look at him. So, she concludes that if she doesn't look at this young teacher, she will be okay. But, it's not the only one. There is many of them. This gonna be her class from now on. The big ugly ghost gets inside the teacher's body, and Miko thinks this looks similar to the Reaper one on the train. Maybe she can ask him for help. But, the teacher was calling her to read the next passage. Fuck. She looked at him. This is the worst case scenario. She can hardly think of how to avoid reacting. It's so hard. She starts reading for the class, but it's so clear on her face that something is wrong. The teacher sees this and gets closer to her, but the ghost is getting closer at the same time. Suddenly, a loud noise is heard in the class, and Hana is putting her hand on her belly and asks to go to the nurse's office. The whole class starts laughing at this, and she gets more embarrassed. Miko takes the chance and accompany her to the nurse's office, leaving the teacher wondering. In the lobby, Hana apologizes to Miko for the trouble, but Miko is smiling at her with tears and says Hana, I love you. From the reaction she asks if she's going to die. Iria sees the two friends and decides to go and check in the nurse's office. Hana gets happy, but Miko says she's just hungry, don't worry. Hana tells her it's because she skipped her second breakfast. Second breakfast, Yuri gives her some sweets and she instantly grabs and eats it. She restores her aura again but still can't believe she got sick cause of hunger in front of the handsome teacher. Iria says even your life aura will be drained around him with those spirits. The two girls have a wonder look on their faces, and Yuria realizes she fucked up. Hana doesn't know anything. She tries to cover it up with some made-up lies, and Miko got to understand the situation now. She concludes that there is something missing she can't see but Yuria does. Yuria sees Miko's face and thinks she's super mad. Miko wants to ask her something. But Yuria says I'm busy with class and runs for her life. At the bark, Hana buys another extra big meal, and Miko asks didn't she just have lunch? She replies this was ages ago. Miko didn't find Yuria even after school to ask her, and this got her really depressed thinking. She sees them everywhere, some of them stays in the role they used to do before, and she can't even see some stuff like life aura. Hana waves her hands to a little girl saying kids are really cute, till she sees the look on Miko's face and asks if something bothers her. She replies that she's not the one who went to the nurse's office today. Miko sees a kid with a balloon and waves for him as well to comfy Hana. But, this was a trap. The little kid was actually a ghost that now confirmed she can see him. He screams you can see me and starts attacking her. White energy came out of sudden and attacks the ghost and destroys his hands. But he stands and jumps to the sky landing on one of the twin ghosts smashing her. The other attacks his head and blows it away, making the body falls to the ground screaming and hitting till it vanishes. 
The white ghost looks at Miko and rise two fingers. Miko still shocked by the sudden turn of events. Did she just escape death without even realizing? She remembers what the white big creature said back then. Did he mean they gonna protect her three times? Does this mean only one left? And Hana hears her belly noise again. A boy shows his mom the exam results. He scored 98 points and asks if he can go and play now. She asks why. But he says to have fun with his friends, but she was asking about why he missed this two points. His friend calls for him saying they will be late for the birthday party. His mom hears it and gets angry cause he didn't tell her, and asks why he's such a liar like his father. Later in the garden, the boy loses hope and can't control his anger anymore, till he sees a little cat approaching him. A little cat, that looks so weak. A voice calls for him, and the teacher gets back to reality, and asks another student to continue reading. Hana covers her face in the back while eating another meal, and Miko looks back at the teacher with serious eyes, thinking she must do something about him. A while later, the school is over and students are heading home. Miko apologizes to Hana for not coming with her, and they separate at the school gate. Miko did actually plan to wait for their young teacher Zeno, and she starts following him wherever he goes, till he does something and calls the cops for him. This is the only way she can save Hana, and herself. But the ugly ghost steps out of his body again and if Miko looks at him, she will have to deal with this creature. So she decides to look at the ground and follows this dark soul's footsteps. She stays in his footsteps till she gets to a side road. He gets downstairs and then turns to the right under a little tunnel. So she gets closer to the wall to have a look. She sees him standing in front of a little cat and takes cover to not get discovered. She's watching in silence, but he's getting closer to the kitten. No, not him, this is bad. His hands are about to catch it, but she suddenly screams at him to stop. He looks to see one of his student from the class, but he now remembers her from that day, when she refused to give him the kitten. This is totally the worst that can happen, but the kitten runs to her hands. The teacher asks what she's doing here, and Miko can't think of a reply. He asks her to give the kitten back. She shakes her head then starts running away. She planned to call the police and catch him red-handed, and he wouldn't be allowed to go back again and Hana would be saved. But she couldn't stand to watch what he's gonna do. She strips on the stairs and falls down hard and looks up to check on the kitten. But, the young teacher already followed her, and that big creature is here as well. He asks why she does refuse to give him the cats. He suddenly realizes something and says wait, are you the one who hurts them? But the kitten escapes from Miko hands and runs to the road. He jumps after it to save the kitten. But, the car hits him instead, and she watched all this, frozen. That day, the young kid tried to get the cat away saying that's not food. But the cat stays and doesn't leave, it sounds like it's hungry. He took it home and gave it shelter and food. And he knew he should keep this a secret from his mother. This thing had an effect on his mood, and he looked more open to life. And even he refused to play with his classmates to get more time to spend with his cat. He finally found this feeling in his life. But, one day when he comes back to check on his cat, he sees only blood and violence marks everywhere, and his mother voice comes to his ears. She says I got rid of that dirty thing. You are back to hide things from your mother again. At the hospital, Zeno is awake but wounded badly and almost broke his neck. He tells Miko it's not her fault. He's the one who chose to jump after it. What about that kitten? She tells him that her family is taking care of it. He thanks her, and she apologizes that she misunderstood him. She thought he was gonna hurt it. He asks why she thought so. She wants to explain. But, this thing is still here, so she asks about what he was doing back there. He tells her that there is someone in the area who abuses animals and he tries to save them, but it always ends up with finding them dead or too weak to stay alive, and he thought this person was her, cause she was acting so suspicious. This explains why he took such roads, but he warns her not to make lost kittens posts on the internet, she doesn't know if the person coming is actually a good person. That's why he rushed to their location in the garden back then. A doctor comes into the room and says so this is why you turned my clinic into a vet. When I heard you jumped into a car to save the cat I wasn't surprised, but when I saw you have a student coming to check on you, this is really a thing. The doctor is Zeno's childhood friend. Miko wanted to have a private talk with the doctor, and he asks if he's doing well at school. She says he's a good teacher. He feels relieved and says that's good. His mother really destroyed his life even after she doesn't exist anymore. Miko asks what does he mean? He starts talking about Zeno's childhood and says his mother didn't even want someone to get close to him or even look at him. She totally wanted to control everything about him. After all this explanation, Miko can tell now who that ugly ghost and feels so wrong to judge such a nice person this way. But she now decides not to ignore this anymore. 
She goes back to the room and talks to him. Once you feel better would you please take care of that cat? He tries to say something. But the mother ghost shows up screaming at her don't look at him. She gathers herself thinking it's too late to back off now. You love cats, don't you? The ghost gets angry and screams at her don't get close to him. He says I don't love it. But she explains that he wouldn't risk his life to rescue it if he actually doesn't. This got the ghost furious and the cat's soul starts to show up. Miko suddenly says, haven't you done enough yet? He doesn't know what she's talking about. You better set him free now. He wonders what's happening to her, but the person meant by this already understands. Yes, I can see you. At the door, what's left of the mom's ghost comes to Zeno. He looks at it and says what are you doing there? She thinks that he sees her and approaches him. But, he was talking to Miko. Another white energy hits her and destroys the ghost totally. The twin ghosts start talking to each other in a weird language arguing about something. Then they leave and vanish. Miko isn't recovered yet from this. The teacher is trying to ask her what is this out of a sudden. But her tears start coming down unable to hold them anymore. He looks at her trying to tell what's happening. Hana and Yuria are here. They came to check on the teacher and Miko. But for no reason, Hana starts shouting at the teacher that she shouldn't die in front of a student. What if this got her depressed and affect her mentality? Miko tries to stop this nonsense and reminds her that he's the one who almost died. The teacher thanks them for coming. He feels okay now. Miko sees the cat ghosts start vanishing into the air. She doesn't know if this was due to Hana's or or cause his evil mom is gone now. Iria tells her that old people say that spirits haunt those who sympathize with them, and asks why she's hiding this from Hana. Miko tells her that she doesn't want to her to worry about something she can't do anything about. Hana calls for them to go grab some butt bone sweets that make you feel like you are eating a real butt. A week later, Zeno came to grab the kitten but Miko's little brother is crying over it. On another day, in a side road, there is a dude with a hoodie catching a sharp tool in his hands and intends to grab one of the cat's eyes. But, a hand grabs his shoulder saying, I finally found you. He says do I know you? A police officer is annoyed by this people's disappearance recently. They have to make a post about another missing person and hope someone finds something this time. Let's make it double dust of